Bob Nightingale of USA Today joining me here live on The Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Bob? Yes, good. Good chatting with you again. What, what, so how does this wind up in any way, shape, or form uh, other than Kenny Williams is gone or the kid returns, Bob? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, Kenny, Kenny Williams isn't going anywhere. The kid is gone and Alvin Rush is gone. He's not coming back. And uh, he's told the players that, that uh, he's done. He's made his uh, statement, Stan. I think it would look kind of funny for him to come back now. Well, unless unless uh, the uh, chairman, Jerry Reinsdorf, has a chat with the players and decides that this is something that isn't going to unite the locker room, even if it is, like, let's let's do it for, for us against Kenny Williams, you know, even if it is that, unless Jerry Reinsdorf looks here and says, boy, this is a mess, and the only way that this can, can be handled with the players is to let the, the kid back, a LaRoche gets his $13 million, and either Kenny Williams saves face or not. Right? Well, let's see. Yeah, let's be honest, Rich. I mean, the uh, there's no way in the world that's just Kenny Williams' decision. I mean, uh, players had to speak out. Someone had to be upset by this, or several people upset. And I think Kenny Williams just wearing it. It wasn't just his decision, not by any means. Huh. I think it, I think it had been building and building. Then he's just taking the fall for it. So, w what is the genesis of this situation changing? Then, from what you could tell, Bob. I don't think it's changing uh, at, at all. And, uh, you know, no, I mean, I mean, I guess the White Sox approach to Drake LaRoche being around, what, 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 what changed then but from what you are hearing? I don't know if it was a, uh, a, a little incident or just someone saying, you know, hey, I'd like to, uh, you know, use some profanity in the clubhouse or, you know, talk about my private life and I feel uncomfortable having a kid around. So I don't know if it was someone along those means. And everybody said nice, polite, respectful kid, but I, but I think it did make some guys uncomfortable. So will Major League Baseball just come in and say, we're going to handle this from now on by saying uh, children of a certain age are only around X number of hours or X time on the field and then they have to leave? I mean, what is, is, this, is this going to be a wider league-wide issue, do you think, Bob? Uh, I think it's going to be a, a case where, and it really is, but no one's been enforcing it. Kids are not allowed on the field, not even asking for game time. Uh, you know, maybe not even on the field unless you're a certain age and all, uh, it, just with the uh, safety issues and all that. And I think as far as kids in the clubhouse, that's up to each individual team. I think it'll stay that way. Just, you know, like how many family trips the team has and things like that. But, yeah, I don't know any case where, uh, where a player's son uh, was in the clubhouse, you know, nearly like uh, Drake was. Yeah, how off, how, it, it, again, it makes it sound like he's there putting pine tar on LaRoche's bat in the batter's box and handing it to Dad the minute he, <laughs> he, it sounds like he's, you know, I mean, how much was he really around? He was around almost, uh, mostly all home games in about a little less than half the road trips. So he's around a lot. Uh, the kid gets homeschooled, and Adam, as I said before, he thinks, my son can learn more in a clubhouse than he can in school. And uh, so he was around an awful lot. And this is going on now for the past four or five years. Bob Nightingale of USA Today joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So where do things stand right now? Is, uh, is, did Chris Sale get time on Mr. Reinsdorf's schedule? Is he, is he, on, is he, on the, is he being calendared for this chat? <laughs> what's happening? I think what's going to happen now is the, uh, yeah, definitely they're going to uh, have a meeting where Jerry Reinsdorf is going to talk to the team and address the issue and saying that he su supports his stance. I mean, I think so does Robin Ventura, the manager, but just Robin Ventura can't come out and say that without losing everybody in that clubhouse. So it's just a, uh, a case where let, let Kenny Williams be the bad guy. And so, uh, they'll talk, and that, that'll be the end of it. And then that'll, that'll, be, that'll be the end of it for discussion. But, I mean, how can a team move on – when the Cy Young Award candidate type pitcher for your team says that this guy's a liar and, and the wrong guy walked out of the locker room. Uh, how, how, how does that genie get put back in the bottle, Bob? Well, at least it's just the club vice president. Right. Not the manager. It's not even the general manager. You know, we all know that there's, you know, not every – kind of team likes each other. A lot of guys can't stand their manager, some coaches. So that won't change. And the White Sox players say, you know, nothing else. It might unite the players together like us, us versus management. Uh, now, while I do have you here, Bob, uh, on the phone, 
I'd love to ask an actual on-field baseball question. May, <laughs> can we do that in this day and age with child <laughs> care and, and personalities being worn on sleeves and if it's allowable or not? I mean, that's been the discourse. went out of style about 20 years ago. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's been the discourse for baseball for about 10 days now. Um, <laughs> right. Have you seen anybody as strong as the Cubs? Are the Cubs the one that we should truly believe as the favorites this year? They should be the favorites. They, they really should. Uh, but that being said, Rich, you go to the St. Louis Cardinals clubhouse, they say, okay, let's, let's see how they uh, act with the expectations. That's a big burden to carry. I mean, look at the Washington Nationals. Mm -hmm. You've been taking out that team with the World Series the last four years and falling flat in their face. So the Cardinals you know, still won 100 games last year. They were really beat up. They still believe they'll be back. So I still think it'll be a, uh, a great race in that division between the Cardinals and Cubs that the, the Cubs won't simply just run away with it. So then what's the team that everybody's kind of looking at saying that this could be the breakout surprise team uh, of 2016, sort of like last year's Astros in a way? Yeah, you know what? The, the one team that's uh, coming to people's minds is Cleveland Indians. They have a great starting rotation, as good as any rotation in the American League, in that they could surprise a whole lot of people uh, by winning the Central. And even though they're World Series champions, they can't see the Royals look as strong as ever. Yeah, right. I know people are picking to win 76 games, 79. There's no reason in the world they won't win close to 90 again. And uh, have you run into Goose Gossage at all lately? You know, I wish I, wish I did run into him more. <laughs> he's, always been one of my, he's, he's always been one of my favorites. I saw him about a month ago and uh, did not have a conversation. <laughs> he's, yeah, I think he's good for a quote these days, Bob. I, I don't want to yeah, tell you how to yeah. do your business, but <laughs> thanks for calling in. <laughs> Thanks for calling in, Bob. We'll chat again soon. Sure, my pleasure. You Thank bet. There's Bob Nightingale. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.